What's up, YouTube? Well, this is a response video to Dewar's video he made back in uh, August 7th. And if you go in, um, if you go to his channel, Richard Dewar, good channel, man, good uh, boxing channel on uh, YTBC, he posted a video called, in my opinion, Leo Santa Cruz will beat Guillermo Rigondeaux. And his thing was that Leo Santa Cruz is, uh, you know, high volume. You know, he's a high volume, uh, you know, f fighter. And then um, Guillermo Rigondeaux will, will not be able to deal with the, you know, the high volume. Which, for one, I disagree with. And um, in my opinion, for, for this, this is a couple of reasons. For one, Leo Santa Cruz don't even want to fight. Okay? So, psychologically... He's already defeated. You know, he, he came out with comments talking about he needs $3 million to fight Guillermo Rigondeaux. He never called out Guillermo Rigondeaux. In all the interviews, he's a, you know, he's, you know, Guillermo Rigondeaux is like his boogeyman. You know, he, he's scared of him. A lot of dudes, they scared of him. They don't want to face him. And with Dwyer, he mentions like, oh, well, he's been knocked down before. Yeah, he's he's been knocked down. He has been knocked out, and he's always gotten up to win. And sometimes the cases he he's won by a uh, knockout. But the reason why he, you know he gets knocked down is um is uh is because for one he, he he keeps his head high. I mean he's already short, you know. He, he, so usually he gets caught with something, and so it it's whatever you know. It's boxing. You're gonna get hit. And then um, I believe in his last fight, he fought against some uh, Japanese guy. The dude was a, a division higher than him. Guillermo Rigg now said to himself that, um, which weight class is that, 120, 122, 126 or something like that? He said, I think he said to himself that he's like a 118 you know, fighter. And that the fact that he's fighting, I believe, at 122 is... Uh, is a stretch enough for him, you know. He's already he's already a small fighter, fighting a lot of big guys. But anyway, he 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 doesn't shell up. You get get what I'm saying? So it's not he's not it's not like he's a he got he has the high guard like um, Joshua Kalati, who who never let his hand go against Pacquiao or Miguel Cotto and stuff like that. He lets the other dude be more active. Thing is, he's he, he's a counter puncher. You know, so he he wants you to come towards him. He wants you to let his hands go, so you can um, so he can counter you. He, he he wants you to let your hands go. So Leo Santa Cruz being a high value puncher really plays into his hands. I mean, if you just they did an uh they did a breakdown of uh Glenn Morrigandale and they said he does a thing. Uh, you guys probably seen it many a times where he like sticks out. You know, a jab or, you know, he like rotates his hands and to make it seem as if he's punching. They, they call it probing. So he's trying to get the guy to open up so he can counter, you know. And it's not like he's going to stop countering. And, and he, I mean, dude, the dude's been knocking out guys with these counter punches and stuff like that. These guys hurt. You know, that's why they low value. I mean, geez, he got a technical knockout versus the bigger dude. Even though the dude almost had him out, he ended up getting a technical knockout. It was just like uh, Laura versus uh, Guillermo, uh, not uh, Laura versus uh, Angulo. You know, Laura just circled, you know, kept popping him, popping him, popping him. And the dude eventually had to quit. And to me, that's that's what's going to ha happen when uh, Glam when Leo Santa Cruz decides to fight Glamour Rigondeaux. I mean, Rigondeaux is looking for a fight on those. Uh, so somebody mentioned that his his his, his uh, promotional team and all this other stuff. But if they really wanted to make that fight happen, it would have happened by now. But um, Leo Santa Cruz, I think, mentioned that uh, his father don't want him to fight. Leo Santa Cruz mentioned that he needs like $3 million to fight him. So to me, Leo Santa Cruz psychologically is already a defeated fighter. The reason why he wants to fight Abner Mares and the reason why he is fighting Abner Mares, let's face it, face it, in the past couple of fights, Abner Mares hasn't 
he hasn't looked great, man. He he's 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 been getting hit hit a lot, man. Gets you know lower tier, you know competition guys we never even heard of, and Leo Santa Cruz sees an opportunity for for him to win. That that's it. Abner Mars is not no uh, elite counter puncher like a Guillermo Rigondeau, and, and you know it's it's crazy because um, Dwyer mentioned that. Um, you know, it's sort of like knocking Guillermo's uh, Rigondeaux's win versus Nonito Donaire, who at the time I believe only had like one loss. Talk about he he was low, you know he was low volume, um, he wasn't himself that night or something like that. I'm like, dude, he wasn't himself because every time he let his hands go, he was getting popped in the mouth. And Donaire was way bigger than Rigondeaux. Come on, man, you you see, I mean, Rig, I mean, Nonito Donaire looked like a giant. Uh, at that weight class, he was fighting Guillermo Rigondeaux. So I I don't know how you know. Sometimes I think, uh, <laughs> so, so, excuse me. Sometimes I think Dwyer is just um, trying to get a reaction out of people. So you know when he makes some of these comments, he makes um, this one. Uh, I think warranted a thumbs down. I I didn't thumbs down though. You know, I just I just listened and I just shook my head. But I did think it warranted warranted a a, a video response. Uh, because I, I don't think he actually thought about the the counter punching abilities of a Guillermo Rigondeau and that that as far as counter punchers almost like Juan Juan, Juan Manuel Marquez, even though to me Marquez is not as defensively responsible as Rick and Dow. Um, he's he's one of the best counter punchers. Him, Mayweather, they're one of the best counter counter punchers in the game. And not only that, you, you got to understand that that Rick and Dow, he he can go tit for tat, man. He he can go tit for tat. You hit him, he's going to hit you back. He's looking to hit you back. That's why he's gotten in trouble some of the times because if you tag him or something like that, he feels as if he's he's gotta lay hands on you. So he, he I mean, he's not a punk. He's not gonna let you just you know run over him. I, I haven't seen nobody run over him. And the dude that was bigger than him, the dude from Japan, he he tried doing that. Rick and I just kept circling him, popping him, circling him, popping him. You know, staying in the pocket at, at his detriment, in, in my opinion. And um, you know, popping this dude all night. So, yeah, man, I, I got no more to say about that. Uh, y'all, let me know what y'all think. Um, I I don't know how any anybody. I mean, if you if you picking Santa Cruz, go ahead, man. Go go ahead. But I mean, he's getting paid well just fighting these. Um, I mean, Abram Namara is as late. He's the only dude I know that's name worthy. That that he's fought. Hell, he might not even survive this fight. For all we know, Mares might get the upset. Um, I I don't. I think it's I think it's a fifty fifty fight. So we'll we'll see, man. If he gets in there with uh, Rigging Dow, I got Glamour Rigging Dow all the way. All right, let me know what y'all think. All right, bye.